Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad. Hi. How's it going, GR Dad? Fine. Excellent. Excellent. The <laughs> cocktail of the week this week is uh, it's called the Cracks in the Foundation. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. That's very stressful. That's a very stressful. Why isn't it called the water leak? Because I, I got a whole story for you about this. Oh, I'm anxious. Cracks in the Foundation. It's bourbon, apple brandy, cardamaro, capoletti, which I assume is a liqueur and not the noodle. Don't assume. And black walnut bitters. I'm looking at a picture and there's no noodles in it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cracks in the Foundation. Uh, this is a drink that was created in response to an incident. So in Richmond, Virginia, Richmond, Va, uh-huh. uh, Metzger Bar and Butchery, a German influenced restaurant in the Union, Union Hill neighborhood. Metzger means butcher. So it's butcher, <laughs> butchery, bar, butcher bar and butchery. Yep. Guys. Look, maybe it's someone whose name was Metzger because they have always been butchers. So they named it after themselves. Sure. Fair enough. Okay. So so it's a restaurant in Richmond, and they had a reservation for a private party, which it turned out was the Family Foundation. The Family Foundation is like a super conservative, Christian, anti-LGBTQ, anti-abortion group. Yeesh. And the Metzger Bar and Butchery is like, so So let me just say, <clears throat> excuse me, the co-owner is like a TV chef. She's on Top Chef. She was on Chopped. Oh, that's cool. Chopped. Wow. And she says, many of our staff are women or members of the LGBTQ community. All of our staff are people with rights who deserve dignity and a safe work environment. Environment. We respect our staff's established rights as humans and strive to create a work environment where they can do their jobs with dignity, comfort, and safety. So they realized about an hour and a half before the event was to start, this was the Family Foundation, and they're like, fuck no, don't come. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the Family Foundation's real mad about it. And uh, they're like, this is unfair. This is suppression of christians oh my goodness and they're basically like you guys can all fuck right off <laughs> if you actually were christians you'd be welcome anywhere yeah no kidding uh so elizabeth sepper a professor at the university of texas says it's about the overall positions and policies the group has taken it's not about christian versus non-christian because like they would happily have invited you know, like the Protestants down the street to have their little thing here, right? Is that these guys are actually assholes. That's right. It's not that they're Christian assholes. <laughs> there, there you go. So they, of course, are very mad about it. And uh, in response, you know, like Yelp had to freeze the page for Metzger's, you know, because then all like the Christian Family Foundation people come in and are like, this place is discriminatory and terrible and uh so anyway metzger bar and butchery created in response to the incident this drink cracks in the foundation oh <clears throat> just referring to the family foundation so good job good job their instagram is metzger m-e-t-z-g-e-r r-v-a because they're in richmond virginia r-v-a yeah that's the car sticker now is r-v-a yep richmond so Va. exactly so you can find a picture and they tweeted a picture of this drink and they said, we're so grateful to our many guests and neighbors for their support the past few days. To say thank you, we're donating all proceeds from this cocktail to Equality Virginia tonight. Cracks in the foundation. So there you go. That's cocktail of the week. Good job. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Are you ready for administrative corner? <laughs> I have been waiting for administrative corner because I love it. So when we got all of like the Golden Ratio Foundation stuff going in the spring... I was like very, I have never run a nonprofit before. I don't know about all this stuff. And I was just sort of like going through all of the options that like some website that's like, so now you're running a nonprofit. <laughs> and they're like, you should sign up at this like car donation place. You see this like NPR does this all the time, right? Like if you yeah. have an old car, like you can donate it to NPR. So it turns out if you do that, like NPR doesn't actually do anything with your car. There's like an organization who, do, who like 
you sign up with them your npr you sign up with them and if people want to donate their cars they go to this place and uh the place like picks up the car they price the car they sell the car they take a percentage and then they give the rest to the nonprofit. so i signed us up for it and uh, like maybe it's listed on the website like i don't even know if it's listed on the website because i'm like who's gonna donate a car to us and it turns out somebody did this week i got an email from the car place and they're like someone has donated like a 2011 chevy cobalt to you it doesn't run but it's in good shape but it's in good shape and so they're gonna like go pick it up and then sell it for i don't know parts or fix it up and sell it but they're gonna take care of it and then we get a percentage of the proceeds for the foundation so that's pretty nice it's pretty cool somebody gave us a car yeah and we don't have to fix it we don't actually get to see the car i get to park it under the house no oh my god that'd be terrible because <laughs> i think i was like i don't want to deal with cars but no there's just like a which is like a great idea there's an organization that'll do that for you oh. so that's it for administrative corner do you have any items are we are we previewing the next plushie toy perhaps uh I will just say that the Vink plushie toy is about to go into prototype That's it. That production. was it. I thought it was a secret, maybe. It's not oh. a secret anymore. Yeah, so the super followers slash Patreons have been seeing all of the um, prototype drawings of the Vink plushie and helping us refine it. And uh, I have approved the final version with a couple Easter eggs. Well, one Easter egg that they haven't <laughs> seen. And uh, so now the factory is going to like make a prototype and we did we did a few rounds of revisions on that with the hopper plushie trying to get the color right and everything you don't want to do that because like they have to make the whole thing but um yeah i'm excited about it it's just like build a dog build a bear <coughs> build a vink except they have to like sew the whole outside and then parts they just like, like, like in, inflate it with floof like they stick a little tube up its butt that they do yeah and they go <laughs> and then it inflates it <laughs> that's a pretty accurate sound <laughs> so it'll probably be i mean the first prototype i gotta say they turned them around pretty fast for hops but it's normally supposed to take like four to six weeks so a uh, couple months you'll be able to buy a vink or you know pre-order your vink plushie and then it'll be the same as like with it won't be christmas one. definitely not for christmas no. christmas sorry one of the who's sending out Woodsmith cards woods foods yeah. at woods foods it's, is it at Woods Foods? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we don't have anything to do with that, but it's pretty nice. I'm just saying, it's one of the one of the fans is putting those together. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We miss Foods so much. I miss that dog so much. This is not administrative, but we miss Foods. He was an outsized personality. The uh, once we're done with the Vink plushie, Foods is next on the list because I miss him and I want a Foods plushie. I want like five. Wow. I want one that I can bring with me everywhere. I just want to hug him. If you no, I'm want get five, I want 25. <laughs> we'll definitely buy a crate of the Voods plushies. I'm going to buy them all. All Voods. <laughs> Nobody gets any except me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, don't worry, they'll make more. Hey, all right, hey, it's time hey. for dog updates. Is it now? Now, let me let me just start with the first dog update. It's so, ignoring me. <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> so in the mornings we we have a kind of light routine like ingo usually gets up before me because remy wakes me up yeah takes the dogs out if i'm real lazy you'll be making breakfast but usually i get up before you're making dogs breakfast i wouldn't call it lazy i would say preparing for the day you also go to bed way later than sometimes me. like five hours later than you no um but usually, like, as you're preparing breakfast for the dogs, I'll make my way into the kitchen and I'll grab a Diet Coke and, like, whatever my little muffin equivalent is for the day. Yep. And I'll come sit on the couch while you give the dogs breakfast because I'm out of the way. Yep. Sometimes <clears throat> you sing while, like, Vink dances and things like that. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll make little comments about the weird activities. Yeah. I'm like the Greek chorus of breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So the door to the office suite where Remy eats is right next to where I sit on the couch. And earlier this week, I was sitting here on the couch watching you do breakfast. And like you come out of the kitchen and you asked me a question. And I was like, Ingo's mouth looks like really weird. And I thought you were chewing something and talking to me. But no, you walk over to the door to the little office suite. You slide the door open. And then out of your mouth, you extract a whole hard boiled egg. 
which you had had just like in the little cheek pocket while you were talking to me. Roop, out comes the egg from your mouth and then you fed it to Remy. And I was like, Ingo, were you just carrying an egg in your mouth? And you responded, and I wrote this down so I didn't get it wrong, <laughs> quote, squirrels do it. <laughs> Explain yourself. I had my hands full. I had like <laughs> something else in my hands or I was going to measure Remy's blood sugar or something. So I had to carry the egg somehow and it was... <laughs> Why not put it in my mouth? It's like mama bird. I just put it in my mouth and then, you know, took it out and gave it to Remy. But like in your little cheek pocket off on the side. Well, I don't want to chew it. <laughs> it's an intact egg for Remy. I admire the creativity of it. I mean, it wasn't like it was chips and dip. It was an egg. Mm-hmm. It's fine. <laughs> I put a, I carry a lot of things in my mouth. You you found it dis, you find it disturbing where it's like if I'm like paying with my wallet or something and i would oh, need you to do, do something stuff else. in your mouth i just time. like hold it in my mouth and it's like it's not the t- best because it gets bite marks and it wet <laughs> ingo gets really stressed at airport security and it's better now because we have like clear and pre-check and so it's all a little faster but there were a lot of times we'd be like trying to go through security and ingo would be like taking his belt off and like taking his collar stays out and taking his cufflinks off and he's got his wallet in his mouth the whole time and i always yank the wallet out of your mouth <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help <laughs> you can either leave that in your pocket or you can stick it in your bag but it does not need to be in your mouth it was for transitional minutes. in my mouth transitional <clears throat> you do you do keep a lot of stuff in i there. gotta use all my tools i only have two hands and i have a <laughs> mouth for holding things yeah i would have made a good elephant <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, last Friday, I was in Maryland, and Inga was in Florida. Oh my God, we did the handshake thing did it again on Saturday. We, we did. We're going to talk about when we talk about sheds, okay. which is next. Um, but our next door neighbors, not not the ones that we're like real friendly with with the pool, but the ones on the other side, who are all very, also very nice. Yep, they also have a pool now, but <clears throat> we don't go in there because they live there. So they they <laughs> actually. They have invited us to use their pool when they're not around because they tend to leave for like the six months of the it's summer. True. That's true. Um, and I just never have. Um, but they're, they're very nice. And they had a like milestone birthday party for the husband on Friday. I was not around, so I didn't have to go. It sounds like it was a great party. <laughs> didn't have to but go I'm always is a like, good way of putting it. <laughs> can I go for 15 minutes and then leave? Because that's why I'm with every party. And I suck at leaving parties. Except weddings. Weddings, I always stay at till the end because there's dancing. True. No, you like weddings. I, I love a wedding. Yep. Um, but, but I you, suck at leaving parties. I know. I was There was some party that we went to last year. We don't need to talk about where it was. But we went to this party and I was like, we're going to drop into this party for like 20 minutes. We're going to say hi to everybody. We're going to be seen there. And then we're out. And it goes like, okay. And so the 20 minutes, of course, comes and goes. And then the 40 minutes comes and goes. And like finally after an hour and a half, I was like, all right, everybody. So like, listen, thanks. It's been great to see you all. But we got to get home and take care of the dogs. And someone's like, Ingo, you want another beer? And he goes like, yeah, I'd love another beer. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> like I had extracted us. And all we had to do is walk to the door. And Ingo's like, I'd love another beer. And I'm like, man, we have beer at our house. I can't say no to be- oh a beer. My God. Anyway, so we didn't have to do that little tension. Inga went to the party without me. Yeah. And what I, we just... I found it hard to leave. <laughs> which is fine because I wasn't there. Yeah. And it like, I mean, I, I understand that like I'm weird about not wanting to be at parties for more than like 20 minutes. I don't, I don't think, I don't classify it as weird. You're just, that's your preference and mine is I can't leave. Sometimes you want to leave and you're just like, I can't, like I got to say hi to everybody. And I was like, we're leaving. You don't have to say goodbye to anybody. Hurt someone's wow. feelings, maybe. <laughs> that hasn't actually ever happened, but still. I will say, my my friend Cody, we, we did that uh, Irish goodbye at his wedding. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, you know, like we did, we went to the whole wedding ceremony. Right. We had snacks. We like chatted with people at the reception. That's right. We just didn't stay to the bitter end of the reception. Yeah. And I mean, there was like family there and everything. And I was like, we're not going to, you know, like interfere like this isn't about us and i was like okay like let's go and he he reminds me of it all the time he's like i can't believe you just left my wedding <laughs> i was like man that's how i leave every party he's is very good at like <laughs> triggering he's just trying to get you it's get your good he's a good guy so anyway what ingo discovered uh was a story about our tennis balls which i will let you share because it's your story <laughs> yes i was 
this birthday party was something. Let me back up. Yeah. It's it's at the neighbors, but they've it's full catered, full bar. Live music. People on guitars playing live music. I think original pieces, you know, so like you know, nice. Um the wife had organized she enjoys organizing everything. She's in the She's super well Key organized. West Women's Club, yep. which is apparently quite a powerful organization in Key West. She she's definitely a person who you can tell just like has all of her shit together. Garden Club? Women's Club? She does the Garden Club too. Both, right? I think both, yeah. Um yeah, so she enjoyed I think putting putting this on and it was it was very nice. He was they had someone there from Monroe County who Gave him a certificate declaring him an honorary conch. That's really nice. You yeah. came home with a little gift bag with a shot glass it, and a little uh, bottle of whiskey with it, his like birthday on felt, it. It felt like a wedding. There were round yeah. tables. There were not no place cards, although I was, I would have almost expected them at this place. But there was round tables, place settings everywhere, favors for everyone. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Yeah. So I met I met someone who's like, turns out she does um, landscaping around the the neighborhood for like five houses w- within our eight house radius here. And She's, I have met her before, like yeah. out on the street when yeah. right when we got Nacho. Like I I probably had a half hour conversation with her. She's super nice, really smart, interesting. Yeah. She's she's super nice. And and at some point, so we're sort of going you know like trading names and who knows who and and what this and you know and then you know we were talking about the house at the end in where she's also doing landscaping at some point she turns to me and she goes wait your wife's jen right Mm -hmm. i said yep she goes i think you're the cause of all the tennis balls that (laughs) stephanie collects at the end of the at the end of the point so they're like from four houses down from us at like the dead end of our street yeah. is this house. And apparently all our unattended tennis balls, they don't swim out to the ocean like mm-hmm. the, the map of, uh, you know, GR locations indicates. <laughs> they all float down the canal and then get caught up in, you know, whatever uh, juts out at the end of the at the end of this point. And stephanie who lives there is very nice too but she has a whole bowl full of tennis balls <laughs> that she's collected from us but she didn't know they were from us she's just like why where are all these tennis balls coming from <laughs> there's so many tennis balls people are really aren't paying is there like a tennis club or what that's hilarious and i and i was like oh no that was just like when nacho was here he really wasn't careful and then the other day i saw like guac let three balls drift away when we visited the manatee yes which we put in the snaps um which we'll talk more about under taste of the keys but there's a manatee like two canals down so ingo got in his kayak and i paddle boarded over there and we were coming back from the manatee i was like oh there's one of our tennis balls oh there's another one. Oh, there's another one we, <laughs> we came found, back with like four tennis we balls. found all the tennis balls and that was clearly guac and nacho not nacho at all yep nacho innocent it was all guac <laughs> uh nacho is doing great by the way i checked in with his adoptive family over the weekend and they are just we love him so much everything is so amazing he's so great he's getting along with everybody it it just sounds awesome i'm so so happy he was a great is a great dog and he deserves this amazing place yeah he's so much more relaxed like clearly just in his element getting more attention it's great it's great that he gets that because he yeah. wasn't getting as much of it he only us. has one other dog to deal with and to to like establish a hierarchy with i think he's the beta to her, <laughs> yes. to her alpha <laughs> which is fine with him i think yeah. yeah um speaking of dogs that used to live in our house cheds has moved to his new house i like your transition thank you okay good uh so last week we did a podcast over a distance. Sorry again about how bad the audio quality was on that. Uh, we're going to, next time we have to do podcast over a distance, we're going to actually have to hook up the equipment because the audio was terrible on it. It was me. Yeah. It was you. Well, yeah. I mean, I had the podcast equipment. I mean, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying. Anyway. You're just going to have to get a new husband. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> a I, louder one. If I got a new husband, he would still have to use the <laughs> podcast equipment. So we could just keep you and have you use the podcast equipment. Oh, that's probably easier anyway, yeah. especially by next week. Oh, crap. Are we going to have to do it? No, no. Two weeks, three weeks. What do you, what now? You're not going to be gone next week. No. I'll be in Germany over Christmas, though. Are we going to podcast when you're in Germany? Oof. I'll be drunk. You will be. You absolutely are drunk all the time when you're in Germany. <laughs> That's my family's fault. Maybe, maybe we'll record like a kind of evergreen <laughs> bonus pod to release during that week that you're in Germany. I mean, it's sure. two weeks, maybe. It's we could weeks. record one and pretend I'm in Germany, but sober. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, yes, I'm go. definitely not drunk ich at all. I'm in no, I'm not drinking the beer. <laughs> so anyway um so ingo drove cheds up to maryland last week and we did the swappy swap on wednesday and we didn't get to see each other we talked about this on the last podcast we like yes. waved <clears throat> so i went up it was so nice it was just me and shutter from wednesday until friday just me and him and he slept in the bed with me and he was so snuggly and i'd like work on the couch and he'd just like curl up next to me and it was just like he was such a dream dog and was so happy and i was like this is how it's supposed to be with you as opposed to how it is here where he wants just as much attention except there's like all these other stupid dogs like we're like i also want this attention and i'm kind of upset that you're giving him attention and also i need more so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do crazy crap to yeah. to get more attention. Uh, so it was really nice having time with him, but it also sort of emphasized like, man, he really needs to be in. He deserves to have this all the time. Yeah, yeah. he deserves more attention. So the people who now have Cheddar listen to the podcast. Like I showed up at their house and I got out of my car, and it's a a couple, and the the husband is like, "What? Your dad's not here." I, I mean, I don't know if it's worth it to, then to do this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, he must have good taste, and that's excellent. excellent. Yeah. Not just a, a listener, but <laughs> clearly understands the dynamic here. So we talked about a lot of stuff. I have been given permission to talk about all of our conversations, except that I learned his secret childhood nickname, which I was explicitly told I am not to share on the podcast. That sounds good. Yeah. That's, a, that's always a good rule, actually. If you knew, if you knew mine, you probably shouldn't share it either. Did, do you have a secret childhood nickname? From my dad. What is it? Maxa. What's that mean? He just called me Maxa. I don't know why. Uh, maybe he wished he'd name me Max. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maxa. Maybe that was like his secret other son. He called me Maxa. Maxa. That's interesting. Well, my parents called me Dudels, I among other of, things. because so. I was like a fat baby or something, and that fit better <laughs> than Ingo. <laughs> like calling you Chub. Calling you Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max, oh, like max like maximum yeah, yeah, maximum. maximum bingo <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway i don't really remember the did you say lords what was that lords oh, <laughs> like he's so large man uh yeah we're not no we're not, <laughs> that wasn't our our slang no no all right anyway uh they are lovely i was there for like three hours and we just had the nicest conversation okay the guy knows Gwen Filosa, friend of the squad, intrepid reporter for the Florida Keys from the Miami Herald and Strong Keys Weekly. Strong good vibes right there. Yeah. So they worked together in New Orleans at the Times Picayune. And like when the staff got the Pulitzer Prize for covering Hurricane Katrina, he's like swimming through the hurricane floodwaters taking pictures and she's like reporting so I, he's like i know gwen Filosa, and i was like shut up you don't <laughs> I got, she's famous i got home and i was like gwen you know this guy and she's like oh my god she's like tell him he needs to start an instagram for cheddar so <laughs> so that was sl random slash a sign of something um they were both just so lovely um Cheddar was just like, oh, this is interesting. Like, this is my house. And he, like, sniffed around their living room and, like, found a dog bed and, like, laid down in it. And he's like, hey, this is my house now. <laughs> like, he was so good. Um, yeah. I will say, so so both of, both of the people who took in Cheddar are photographers and journalists. And, uh, and the guy works for the AP and covers the White House. 
and he's like here i have this thing for you and he gave me something that i don't think i have ever mentioned is a thing that i have coveted for like my entire adult life since i knew it was a thing that existed i have coveted and i generally don't covet stuff no you usually get it you just get get it i i sometimes get stuff but I, i'm not like super into stuff but this is the thing i have coveted and it is the presidential M&Ms that you get if you go on Air Force One. So good. I have been on Air Force Two before. I didn't get any fucking M&Ms. And I've not been on Air Force One. But I've wanted to get on like 90% so I could get the M&Ms. They're like little boxes and they got the presidential seal on it and like the little M&M guy in the back. And he's like, here, would you like these? And I was like, you are fucking kidding me. Like... <laughs> um yes I but also so holy bad. shit <laughs> uh so they're now like on display in our little liquor cabinet protected. oh i ate them <laughs> they weren't very good I'd i like the so nuts mad. i like the ones with nuts I'd they sucked so <laughs> mad if you ate them they sucked they didn't even have <laughs> peanut butter <laughs> i choked them down <laughs> i threw them away because uh, i didn't like them <laughs> kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> they're all still there don't oh worry God. don't touch them okay <laughs> <laughs> uh but they're they're both like such wonderful people so good to chatter they have two other dogs who were just cute and wonderful and i pet on them a bunch and so we had a really nice talk for like three hours about all of our dogs and um they're just like rubbing on cheddar's face and and he's like punching at them to like get pet more yeah and so they've been doing like a really nice introduction you know slowly like you know not overwhelming him just like giving him space and he is absolutely in love with them and i it seems like they are absolutely in love with him too and he's just doing great and i could not be happier and so they're they're technically uh have him to foster for a few weeks um because the rescue group wanted to see you know how he would do in a house with not as many crazy dogs like is he super demanding or is it you know jealousy kind of makes him even more demanding than he would be so he's gonna spend some time with them and then they get to decide if they want to keep him or adopt him out so yeah. but we're we text every day didn't he turn pictures. one of their their stairs into an escalator actually in an elevator he yeeted downstairs he has not yeeted himself down their stairs he's just not. our stairs oh okay yes there's yes. he regularly yeeted himself down the stairs in our house in maryland in maryland because he didn't yeah. know yeah it smelled different or something he apparently i i have not been told of any yeeting at their house but <laughs> they did say that like their front their front yard is sort of at front door level but their backyard is sort of on a slope so it goes down so he figured out how to use the back stairs to go up to the deck. So apparently he would just make them like go out the front door, go around to the back, go up the stairs. And he's like, I'm so proud of myself. And then they'd go back out the front door, around <laughs> to the back, up the stairs. <laughs> it's very cute to imagine so, that. Yeah. yeah, they were going to practice going down the stairs, but I have not heard how that went. Mm. Hopefully everybody <laughs> is still intact. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. It's fine. He was very sturdy about it. Yeah. Uh, so Cheds is doing great and I am really happy for him to be in a house where he can get like all the attention he's getting, which is a lot and it's great and he deserves it. And I love him so much and I a hundred percent would have kept him if we had fewer dogs slash less Remy. Yeah. I, I think, I think he uses ghost boots to send messages to our squad too. Mm, I like that. Except only Bank cares. Everyone else is doing right. their own thing. Bank is like, Oh, tell me more boots. <laughs> Um, you want to talk about Hopper's leg? Well, the one he, that's not missing. Yeah. we. I, I was, mean, there's three that aren't missing, but the I other front I one. can't remember if we've talked about this before or what the timing is on this. No, this was over the weekend, I think. I think so. Yeah, I think it was Saturday. Maybe, maybe Friday. Fr it was Friday, I think, just before you got back. Yes. I, uh, I was giving Hops a, a, a shower outside and I noticed she had a pretty good size lump on her elbow mm, lumps like are scary golf ball size and kind of a little squishy but it felt like a hematoma and yeah i just learned that word um so it, i was like well it could have been because she bumped her elbow going down the the rocks or something hopefully or it could be the the bad thing cancer mm -hmm. could be another MRSA um, infection yeah so i 
brought her in. I think it was Thursday, right? Because it was I was going to bring her in Friday night, but then Thursday night I brought her in to do- to Dr. Jason. Yeah, it was Thursday. And to the emergency room uh after hours. And he thought it was just an infection. Ju- just an infection. He thought it, had it was a bunch an infection. of gunk in it. Yeah, he drained it and wrapped it and and took took some samples and gave her a broad spectrum antibiotic and so that started thursday and then went into friday friday had another appointment and the doctor sort of the other doctor also agreed that it looked more like an infection than anything else um and that pending the cultures coming back that you know antibiotics and and wrapping it and all that yeah, so she's doing much better. Yep. Um, it looks pretty normal, so we're not wrapping it anymore. She's got the sleeve on. The swelling's too. gone way down. Yeah, it looks pretty normal-ish, which is good. Yep. Um, and the cultures came back today, and it's just a... I don't know if she said it was strep or staph, but a, a pretty normal, just got it from the environment infection. Not MRSA. Not MRSA. Um, it's not super responsive to the antibiotic that she's on So, you know, we're finishing it just so she doesn't develop any resistance. But we have like a cream, sort of like a Neosporin for dogs kind of cream um, that we're just going to keep putting on there. But basically, once it's healed up and closed up, she's good. So and it it looks really good. It's not filling back up like the abscess did with the MRSA. Yeah. So the elbow was wrapped and she was trying to lick it. And so... I don't want to put her in a cone because that's she's already acts all stricken and dramatic and mm-hmm. you put her in the cone she'll she'll faint. <laughs> um so I put the the donut on her which is okay. Um and then I also put the sort of a black sleeve on it to keep the bandage up yeah. because it's on a it's a bad spot on the elbow there you can't really It's all bendy. Yeah, you can't really. So but she was licking the sleeve to where it was like wet in the mornings. Yeah. And so I was like, well, maybe donut again. But then you thought you could, you you thought of a different way of doing it, which is you made the sleeve waterproof. I cut up a waterproof blanket and sewed a sleeve that sewed on to the other sleeve. And now she can't get to it. Yeah. So by awesome. project runwaying her <laughs> a, an, a waterproof arm, you, uh, you made it work. So yep. now now she doesn't have to have the super wrap inside and the like anti lick wrap and she can she just has the waterproof sleeve so she doesn't lick her own her arm thick again, her arm swollen again. Yeah, I changed her bandage a couple times, but by the last time like there it there nothing was like leaking out of it, right? And so we don't need a bandage for that cuz it's like gross. It just is to protect it. So this waterproof sleeve works great. She can't look at it and it keeps protected. the sand out of it. Yeah, it's good. She hates that she can't go in the water. Oh, she's, she's so mad. She hates it. She stands at the window when Guac and 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 Remy go swimming and just cries and grum grumbles. Very dramatic. Just hates it. <laughs> she just can't believe she's not allowed in the water. And when when I let her out on the beach, she'll make three steps towards the water and I'll go no, and she'll look at me just like. I can't believe you're not <laughs> letting me in the water. Yep. Like hops. Look at your sleeve. Look at your elbow. Look at your sleeve. That's why. Yep. She's like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to nudge my tennis ball closer and closer to the water and then look over to see if I can sneak into the water. Oh, hop. She's very good. So additional dog update that I haven't even told you yet, Ingo, is when I was talking to Dr. Faith today mm-hmm. about Hopper's culture results. Yes. So she had called me, I think when we had Nacho up in Maryland in October and was like, hey, I have a dog who needs a blood transfusion. Uh, Like my dogs have already given blood for the transfusion. Is there any chance you could bring Nacho in to do it? Because he's a young, healthy dog. Yeah. And I was like, I would love to do that. But we are in Maryland with Nacho. Yeah. So we can't do it. Um, I'm like, but yeah, like generally totally sign us up. And so now obviously we don't have Nacho. But when I talked to her today, I was like, you know, like you had asked about Nacho, but like Guac is a healthy dog and he's not quite as young as Nacho, but he's fine. He's, he's not an old man. He's full of blood. So I'm like, if you want, 
we can sign him up. And she's like, great, like maybe bring him in when you bring Hopper in. I was like, actually, Dr. Faith, tomorrow we're bringing Guac in because he's got a weird like lump on his gum line, which is probably nothing, but I want them to check out. So Mm -hmm. when we bring him in tomorrow afternoon, they're just going to run like a big complicated blood panel on him. We don't have to pay for it anything. Oh, that's good. Just to make sure he doesn't have any hidden blood diseases. And then if that works, he's he'll be like an on-call blood donor. So if some dog comes in and like needs blood... Faith can call us up and be like, bring in the guaco main and they'll come take some of his blood and That's save great. another dog. How about Vok? Yeah, we maybe could do her too. She seems, I mean, mentally not, but, but physically she's <laughs> quite there. Yeah, that's interesting. Remy, you're damaged, it. Remy. You can't do blood. Remy, you're so, let's talk about Remy. Holy smokes. Oh my Remy's God. our dramatic Ugh. dog of the week. We, so positive news on remy he's started on prozac which i know we talked about but it's making quite a difference he's notably calmer yeah and i mean we're not doing a controlled experiment so like nacho and cheddar are gone and right, remy, right. and also remy is calmer i don't i don't want to say it's causation <laughs> but there is timing it correlates to the timing. I think he's less of a jerk than he was before Nacho arrived. I think he's calm. He's less loud. He yeah. definitely barks less. He d- he still barks more than zero, but he barks a lot less yeah. around the house. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's good. But man, his blood sugar has gotten so hard to control basically since he got the lymphoma diagnosis. And everybody tells us that they're not related. And like, maybe that's true. But holy cow, like his blood sugar a couple months ago was in like the, so it's supposed to be between like 80 and 120, 80 to 200 is okay. And he was in like the four and five hundreds, like way too high. And like, that's not going to kill you immediately, but it can cause like diabetic ketoacidosis, which causes brain damage. It can cause your organs to fail. It'll make his cataracts come back. It makes you feel really crappy. Um, so it's like, not like you're going to die right now, but it's dangerous to yeah, have so his blood sugar. We that didn't high. change the insulin dosage at all. And his blood sugar just kind of went way up for. Yes, weeks. that's right. It, it, he had been kind of in an okay ish range, you know, the two hundreds occasionally going into the three hundreds. And then all of a sudden he's like in the fives. And so we talked to the vet and we're like, all right, well, we obviously have to give him some more insulin. So we increased him by like one unit from 11 to 12. And now, like today, what was it, like 40 at one point? Yesterday it was 25. Oh, my God. It's He's having just these crashes. completely worse, actually, than 400. You will straight up die right away from your blood sugar being 25. Yeah. Like, straight up die. It's real bad. And, yeah, and so it's like when it gets down like that, like when it gets un you know, under 80, especially, but like under 70 or something, then we're feeding him like bread with like just honey piled on it as much so it won't run off. I mean, it's basically like teaspoons of sugar. This is easier to eat, but we we should just give him teaspoons of sugar. All day today, it was like that. Like it was low after breakfast and all day we've been taking the poor guy's elbows must be so sore from all the pricks because we've been taking his blood sugar like every half hour and then like feeding. I'm like, all right, here's a hot dog bun that I'm just filling with honey, like eat eat the thing and he's like oh this is delish this is delish and then like 15 minutes later okay like it's gone up like 10 points more honey and hot dog buns <laughs> yeah, and he's like, like oh it's still pretty good this all is pretty good. day we've been trying to get his sugar up so uh we skipped his dinner insulin so now it's you know now it's higher than it should be but he's not going to die from that i'm like having it too low so it's weird he was on the same insulin dose for so long and doing pretty fine and then all of a sudden it was super high and then we make a pretty small change and all of a sudden it's like really low. So it's, he's quite a project with that. Yep. His okay. gums were gray. His gums were gray. I was like, Oh, how are your gums looking? I was like, Oh no, they're looking very bad. <laughs> Usually they're pinkish. They have some more honey. Pinkish or reddish. Now they're not so pinkish. Now they're better. So that's it for my dog updates. Do you have any other stuff before we move on to ramblings? I got a good one. Yeah, no, I think everyone has, no one else has done anything crazy. Okay. So uh, I run an account, a Twitter account, Don't Bite Anyone Unless They Ask You To. It's at Don't Bite Anyone. Yes, it's niche. Pretty much every day I tweet a story of someone who got arrested for biting someone else without being asked to do so. 
it's a criminal offense it turns out actually uh, all over the, the place. bitings and they are very frequent. And I'm signed up for a Google News Alert for the search terms biting and arrested. So I get a report every day of the people who are arrested for biting other people. <laughs> Occasionally a story gets in there of someone who's like arrested because their dog bit someone. But it's almost always people biting other people. Sometimes people biting animals. Um, but it's, it's quite a joy that pops <laughs> into my inbox every day. And I got this one this week and I was like... This story kind of has everything. So I'm going to read it to you <laughs> from, of all sources, the DailyMail.com in the UK, this fine journalistic institution. Oh, yeah. But it, no It's kidding. not. But uh, the story was reported all over the place. We're going to believe it this this time. It's like sometimes I read the New York Post, not because I respect the New York Toast Post, but they just sometimes have details that like more respected journalistic organizations won't put in there. But you really want to know those details. <laughs> the Daily Mail is kind of like that. All right, so here's the headline, and it's a big long one because it's the Daily Mail and they'll do that. Chris Christie, former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie's niece, 25, is arrested and accused of biting officer on Spirit Airlines flight after accusing Latino family of, quote, smuggling cocaine. I mean, why read further? That's enough. Because there's so enough. much more. I just got all the information that I, I need. Mean, I love that it's a Spirit Airlines flight. You oh can just gosh. picture the big yellow plane and how terrible it is. Have you flown Spirit Airlines ever? Yes. I have once too. I don't think I get my boarding pass to, to print and then I had to go to the gate, but there was no one at the gate. I don't know how I got on that this flight. It's terrible. Uh, all right. So you got Chris Kirstie, a person we know. Niece, don't care. A Spirit Airlines, blatant racism. Okay. So... Here's now and, they, and biting and biting it gets so much better or worse whatever so <laughs> now on the daily mail they've got that headline and then they have six bullet points before they get to the actual That's story even better than the real story so here's the six bullet points former new jersey governor chris christie's niece was kicked off a plane after accusing a latino family of smuggling cocaine new orleans authorities so the flight was from new orleans to new jersey New Orleans authorities say Shannon Epstein, 25, then became combative on board the flight back to New Jersey and injured six sheriff's deputies. She's a dervish. One officer was said to be bitten during the altercation while others were kicked in the groin or spit on. She's a dervish. All the while, she allegedly threatened the deputies, saying her uncle is friends with former President Donald Trump and she knows important people. Boy. Epstein was taken to jail and then released after posting bail and is due back in court on January 23rd. So so already we've got some more texture here. <laughs> All right. No sympathy for this one. No. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie's niece was arrested and dragged off a plane after she allegedly accused a Latino family of, quote, smuggling cocaine. Authorities say Shannon Epstein, 25, then became combative aboard the 6 a.m., Spirit Airlines flight from New Orleans to New Jersey. She's not sharing in the Chris Christie fortune at present. You got to get to the airport at five. You got to leave your New Orleans hotel at like 4.15. Some might say you don't go to bed and you just drink through the night yeah. to catch that flight Yeah. from New Orleans. I'm just uh, surmising here. Even the Daily Mail didn't speculate about that. So then it goes on. Six sheriff's deputies. She threatened them. She bit one of them. Uh, she said her uncle's friends with port, former President Trump, and she knows some powerful people. Epstein ultimately had to be handcuffed to a wheelchair by seven different sheriff's deputies to be forced off the plane. So they bring a wheelchair onto the plane. They clearly have to handcuff all the limbs, maybe also the neck. To the chair. This sounds like an exorcism kind of movie <laughs> where it's just like you, you got to tie down all the flopping parts. She is charged with six counts of battery on a police officer, three counts of disturbing the peace, one of resisting arrest by force, and one of remaining after being forbidden. That is a good charge. <laughs> remaining after being forbidden. You are forbidden. No. 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 It, no. no you're felon feloniously <laughs> remaining now. The foul mouth niece was released from the Jefferson Parish Correction Center on Thanksgiving Day. This flight was 6 a.m. Thanksgiving morning. Ike. 
She was released after posting $10,750 bail. She is due back in court on January 23rd. She should have spent that on her flight instead of bail. The, according to... No kidding. You could have taken a way nicer flight than fucking Spirit Airlines <laughs> at 6 a.m. <laughs> Uh, according to some dude, the whole situation began when Epstein became angry and started being disruptive on board the Thanksgiving Day flight and asked a family who appeared to be Latino whether they were, quote, smuggling cocaine. Airline employees decided to remove her from the plane, which had already left the gate at Louis Armstrong International Airport, but she allegedly refused to leave after the plane returned to the tarmac. She then became extremely combative when she was approached by Jefferson Parish Sheriff's deputies and injured six while resisting arrest, including biting one on the arm and breaking their skin. Oh. She allegedly kicked others in the groin and spit on others, NOLA.com reports, all while shouting at them that they would lose their jobs or end up in jail because her uncle is friends with oh. former President Donald Trump and she knows some important people. I'm going to try to reenact this. Listen, my uncle is friends with President Trump. I know important people are going to lose your jobs. Should we taser? Should we, should we taser? <laughs> Not in an airplane. There's a lot of metal. No, should we? Come on. Let's taser. Let's taser. The deputies She just kicked me in the balls. <laughs> Can I taser now? All right. So she injured six deputies. They were treated on the scene for their injuries. And then seven other deputies worked to handcuff her to a wheelchair to force her off the plane. As she was wheeled away, she continued to shout vulgarities and tried to bite more deputies. Uh, Just like, uh, fuck you, ass. Did, they, <laughs> did they, anyone film this? Because it just sounds, it looks like it's just a bad there scene. It has to be video. I bad haven't seen scene. it. Um, but I, I just, I liked that write up. It's very dramatic. There, she has, there is no, no victim here except everyone around her she is just sounds just terrible 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 behavior guys terrible so that's ramblings uh for taste of the keys we have Good. two stories one is that we get to hang out with a manatee who it is entirely illegal to pet and so stop asking me if you know, i pet we it. we did not of course pet anything or do anything illegal with the manatee correct stop nothing asking. illegal it's it's for example illegal to you know give water to a manatee and that's illegal which so we would that, not do that didn't happen either yeah no uh but it was pretty cool and there's pictures of it in the snaps from earlier this week and yes uh you you were like that manatee looks like chief brody and then when i put it in the snaps people were like who thought that manatee was chief brody like maybe with a filter on it's a big head it's yeah. the big head brody has a, just the biggest friendliest head <laughs> and so does the manatee all right manatees are giant you, if they're you, so big if you took a cow and had it swim around it would not be as big as this manatee that's true it's bigger than a cow it's like wow and the tail is amazing the fluke is amazing i bet they feel really squishy if the, you were to pet them the tails the whole the body part probably like a hippo except without the murder i've, I've not pet a hippo either neither have i but it looks squishy <laughs> <laughs> all right are you ready for our taste of the keys news story I don't know. I'm bracing myself. This one is kind of making its rounds on like broader news circuits than just conk life. So you guys may see this one. You got to do something really weird to be featured outside the keys. Man arrested after stealing over $1,300 worth of toothbrushes from Walgreens. How many? How Thirteen, much? $1,300 worth of toothbrushes. Is that all of them? So I like to picture this like you say the average toothbrush is like five bucks nah less that's a two per, two pack all right i mean he's you just <laughs> picture him with like hundreds of toothbrushes yeah coming out of walgreens like a trail of toothbrushes let's just picture that while i tell the story and all thirteen hundred dollars worth of toothbrushes is a lot yeah a 37 year old isla Morada man who stole thirteen hundred dollars worth of toothbrushes i'll fill in that detail in a minute okay. from walgreens and marathon was arrested on monday morning According to authorities, deputies responded to the Walgreens on 53rd Street around 1040 a.m. where employees and witnesses stated a man walked out of the store with the items without paying. Just picture him with like 800 toothbrushes. <laughs> 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 they added that he was driving a white Lexus. Implying that he didn't need to steal toothbrushes. Deputies later identified the man as Tracy J. Mofield. Deputies with the Monroe County Sheriff's Office said the Lexus was located near mile marker 57. 
Mofield sped away, but officers did not pursue him for safety reasons. Authorities said the vehicle was spotted again at mile marker 73 where it stopped. Deputies said he admitted to stealing the items <laughs> and then threw them off the Long Key Bridge. This is the mystery. Can the plot picture, thickens. Picture him with the arm full of like 800 toothbrushes walking up to the edge of the bridge and just yeeting them. Why does he hate over. toothbrushes so much? He hates them. He was taken to jail. Do you think he th thought the fish needed them for their oral hygiene? <laughs> so so let me add the like slightly disappointing, but actually it makes way more sense detail. He stole six electric toothbrushes. Six extremely fancy electric These toothbrushes. These must have been gold plated. Like $250, $300 that toothbrushes. That seems like they're inflating it just so they can get a you know f felony larceny or out of it or something he was charged with larceny but Why you don't need to hit throw him them in the ocean i, th I mean because there were only six right so he's like they tried to stop him at mile mark 57 that's in marathon and he sped away so he probably was like fuck 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 and then he stops on the bridge and yeets them off so then he doesn't have them but he did not practice shut the fuck up friday at mile marker 73 because he admitted that he threw him off the bridge then so like kind of Defeats the purpose there, dude. If you're going to throw them off the bridge, then pretend you never had them. How's that? Yeah. Well, he was taken to jail. He's a bad actor. All right, Ingo. It is time for German Word of the Week and Ingo Corner. And I got to say, we've talked about this German Word of the Week because several people have sent me this little TikTok. Yes, the TikTok is very good. It's the two guys. One's a German, one's an American. And they're always talking about different things. Yeah, and so, well, why don't you tell the story, and then I'll I'll just do the bit about the parents. Yeah, I don't know how they, they get on this subject. They're like eating dinner together, and I oh, guess yeah. the American is slightly fidgety. Yeah, I think he's jiggling his leg or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the other one's like, don't, you can't jiggle at the dinner table. And he's like, why not? And he goes, don't you know the story of Zappel Philip? He said, stop being such a Zappel Philip. Zappel Philip. And the American's like, what? Which He's is like, Zappel Philip? Which you is, don't know Zappel Philip? Which is an expression in German. If a, a kid is called Zappel Philip, you say Zeika and Zappel Philip. So it's two words, Zappel, and then Philip, like the name Philip. Just mushed together. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like jiggly Philip, <laughs> jiggling Philip. Yeah. It's, what, there's probably a better word than jiggly. Twitchy. Twitchy. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, it 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 all relates to an old german book from the turn of the last century cent century before this one um called der struvelpeter which has very scary illustrations it was also making the rounds a few years ago um and it's supposed to be like a a moral tale for kids moral tales for kids that's what it is yeah and one of the stories is a little girl who plays with matches and she burns herself burns her house down and dies and another is a kid who never got his fingernails trimmed. So someone comes and cuts off his fingers. <laughs> it's pretty bleak stuff. So it's but not Zappelpeter. Zappelphilip. Or Zappelphilip. He's Sorry. just jiggling around at dinner time. And his parents say, stop jiggling around at the dinner table. Sit up straight and eat your freaking food like a normal kid. I got to say, just, I, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I have eaten dinner with your parents and your daughter and you and your dad totally does this to your daughter and she was she is not a jiggly kid at the table but he'd always be like sit up straight do this thing and i'd be like man like give that kid a break he tells my mom to sit up straight too. <laughs> so, if you told me to sit up straight i would punch you in the mouth that's correct and then sl and then slouch <laughs> and then go back to slouching and then slouch on purpose <laughs> uh, justifiably so Anyway, continue. Um, the parents are like... The parents are like, sit up s straight, sit still, stop jiggling around at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. And Sapa Philip does it even more. He leans back on his chair and is just like... <laughs> <laughs> goofing around and it's causing much consternation. Now, in the video, the German guy is sort of ex telling <laughs> this tale and they're like... St I don't remember if, if they're telling it in English or German and thing, but it's like, stop moving around. And... The kid, he goes, no. That's right. The parents are like, sit still. And he goes, no. No. <laughs> no. Like he's, it's clearly like in no. O umla, just like with no. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> it was so funny. That's, like, that's what makes it really funny for in, the, in these purposes. But So he's leaning back in the chair, and the parents are like, sit up. And he goes, no. 
and then and then he overbalances right and yeah. he loses balance and he grabs the tablecloth to stop his fall and he pulls the entire tablecloth out and unlike the magic trick he just pulls all the food off the table and the table is bare and everything's on the on the ground and it's just it's terrible and, it's terrible and in this video the american goes like well like they could just that's clean it, it up. and the, the german guy goes the parents were dismayed and he's like you could just clean that up and the german guy goes the parents were dismayed <laughs> that's really <laughs> nothing bad happens like the kid didn't die no the parents were dismayed <laughs> the kid didn't die like you'd think he would break his neck or something but no the moral of the tale is just the parents will be dismayed if you jiggle around at the table <laughs> and the order will ups be upset and you'll ruin dinner. The parents were dismayed. You ruined dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Zappel Philipp. The, so the word, not the worst thing in the world. The German word of the week is zappeln. Zappeln. Rumzappeln. Hör auf so rumzuzappeln. <laughs> yeah. Zappeln is the word for a kid like twitching around and being like just not still yeah be still yeah or we'll make you be still and <laughs> it doesn't that doesn't dismayed. work that doesn't work <laughs> yeah otherwise your parents will be dismayed and you'll throw all the food off the table you can just clean that up <laughs> dismayed jen they were dismayed <laughs> all right uh it's time for ingo corner you got anything you don't have to no i, don't, I got nothing special all right, everyone. Appreciate all the fans. Happy holidays. No. I, we'll repeat that next week. No, and the week after. Yep. Thank you all for listening. And until next time, Slava Ukraini. And don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. Yep. Bye. Bye.